Man, put your hands together and make some crazy noise for Jared Brooks. Hallelujah. How was worship today? Didn't like it, just understand that when you're in heaven, you're going to be worshiping 24 7. You know, I know we as a whole in this congregation, there's a lot of different backgrounds. There might be Catholics, might be Baptists, might be Pentecostal, might be no uh, religion at all. But I just want to let you know that we are one people with one God, and we serve the same purpose. And that's to be saved, to be set free, and to show others the salvation of Jesus. I'm coming to you today to talk to you about the one and only Jehovah. Today we're going to talk about Jehovah Rapha. Jehovah Rapha. I'm going to be talking about Jehovah Rapha. Same thing. And I know that the past couple of uh, weeks you've been hearing about God your Father. God your provider. God your banner. And I humbly and I'm thanking you so much for allowing me the opportunity to talk about God our healer. He's not just my healer. He's not just your healer. He's our healer. Can I get amen? Amen. Go ahead and turn with me to Exodus chapter 15. Just put your uh, fingers in the Bible. It's going to be on the screen as well. But I'm going to hit three different points about who Jehovah Rapha, God our healer is. And the first point that I'm going to hit on is our circumstances in trials. Has anybody ever been through a rough spot in life? Has it ever felt like you were on a roller coaster and then sometimes you're even on a decline and you can't ever get back up? Have you ever been at your lowest lows to where you're like, Lord, I don't want to do this anymore. I've been there. I know you've been there. And God is a healer of our circumstances and our trials. Point number two that I'm going to talk about is our heart and our soul. See, the enemy wants us to be so, and when I say the enemy, I mean Everything that comes against you, I'm not saying that's the enemy, but everything that comes against you, if it's not for the glory of God, is trying to pull you away from God. So the enemy is trying to get you so low in the dirt that you give up on hope. And so a lot of times, and every time, we need a healing in our hearts. So he's Jehovah Rapha, God our healer of our heart and our soul, which goes to him. And number three, I'm going to talk about God, our healer of our bodies. I'm going to tell you about my testimony. I'm going to talk to you about the truths of God and what I've learned through faith. And we're just going to go after it. Now, the body healing is mentally, physically, spiritually, emotionally, like you were saying. It can also be financially. So if you need a healing here today, it doesn't have to be a physical healing. How many people have had a, had a hurt heart? Raise your hand. How many people have been hurt by the church? Raise your hand. How many people have been in a financial situation or have had a sickness in your body? Raise your hand. This is a message that everybody can receive. And I'm just going to ask that you open up your heart for it today. Exodus chapter 15, and before we do, let's just bow our heads and pray. Father, we just thank you, we praise you, we honor you, and we glorify your holy name. I thank you that you're here today. And I thank you that you are going to speak. It's not going to be Jared speaking, but the Holy Spirit through me. Father, whatever you want to do, I ask that you do. And we thank you that you are going to show us exactly who Jehovah Rapha is. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Hallelujah. It's okay to talk to church. Um, you're not going to bother me one bit. You might get me a little bit excited when you say something. Hallelujah, something. I don't need it. But it's nice. Yeah. <laughs> Exodus chapter 15, verse 23. Tell me amen when you're there. Amen. I think everybody's there. It's on the screen. Amen. So it says, Then Moses led Israel from the Red Sea, and they went into the desert of Shur. For three days they traveled in the desert without finding water. When they came to Mara, they could not drink it because it was bitter. That is why the place is called Mara. So the people grumbled against Moses, saying, What are we to drink? Then Moses cried out to the Lord, and the Lord showed him a piece of wood, a tree. He threw it into the water, and the water became sweet. There the Lord made a decree, 
and a law for them, and there he tested them. He said, if you listen carefully to the voice of the Lord, your God, and do what is right in his eyes, if you pay attention to his commands and keep all his decrees, I will not bring on you any of the disease that I brought on the Egyptians. For I am the Lord who heals you. I am Jehovah Rapha. Can I get an amen? Amen. We need a revelation of God, our healer. Without a revelation of God, our healer, he's just a God who provides. He's just a God who's our father. He's just a God who has sickness in the world and he can't touch. That's not who God is. If God says that he is a healer in the Old Testament, he's a healer in the New Testament. If God says he's a healer in the Bible, he's in a healer in 2015 until the day he comes back. Because if we say that this is not right and he doesn't heal today, then we're calling God a liar. And I wouldn't want to be on that side of the line saying that he's a liar. So let's break down Jehovah Rapha. Jehovah means the existing one, Lord, the becoming one, someone that you can know. Rapha means to restore, to heal, to make helpful. So Jehovah Rapha, and I put a little spin on it. Says the Lord, the existing one, the present help, the living God who heals his people, the great physician who heals all in all. Can I get amen? amen. I'm going to go for three scriptures and I'm going to show it to you right now. And these are going to be our foundation scriptures. I want to show you that God is a God who is the same God that he said in the Bible and he doesn't change his word is settled and he's forever Psalms 119 89 forever O Lord your word is settled in heaven that word settled means it is firmly established and it cannot be removed Amen. whatever God says in the word it is yours you have that faith for it next one please Malachi 3 6 for I am the Lord, I change not. He is Jehovah Rapha. Hebrews 13, 8. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Jesus Christ is God. He is Jehovah Rapha. And everything he did on the cross, he did it for you. So to go to our first point, I'm going to talk about the circumstances and our trials. We've already established that everybody's had circumstances, everybody's had trials, and has anybody ever been on the, on, on the ledge where you wanted just to jump off and just forget about Christianity? You can be real here, we're in church. I've been there. I've been there many times. But every single time, God's like, you know what? Just have a little bit more faith. Because when the end is almost there, God always provides because he is your healer. Amen. I'm going to give you a little background on Exodus 15. You don't need to put it up right now. I want you to understand what they're coming through. And we're going to go back to Exodus 15. We're going to break it down a little bit and then we're going to go into it. Exodus 15, the background is God's people were just in slavery for 400 years. Who ever has, who's been a year in slavery? Who has ever had whips on their back? who had to build pyramids, who had to build whatever it was and be a slave for 400 years. Four generations dying and living in slavery and in bondage. These people knew sickness. They knew disease. They knew depression. They knew heartache. They knew suicidal thoughts. They knew mental illness. Yes, they were oppressed. They were depressed. And it says that there was two to three million people that came through whenever... They were set free from the Egyptians. Two to three million people. They were eyewitnesses to God. All the plagues, they were there watching it. Every single thing. Hellstorm, the rivers turning red into blood. These people knew who God was. They knew the power of God. They understood that God was on their side because their people weren't being touched. It was the Egyptians that were suffering. They knew sickness, they knew disease, they knew hardship. And when they ate the Passover lamb in Exodus, all of them were healed. Their hardships were over at that moment. And they were delivered. And you're like, how do you know all of them were healed? Well, it says in the scripture. Psalms 105, 37. 
And he's talking about bringing them out of Egypt. He brought them forth also with silver and gold, and there was not one feeble person among their tribes. That word feeble means lacking physical strength, especially as a result of age or illness. That means they were walking in strength because God knew that his people had to be strong to set another foundation to bring him glory. God's a healer. Jehovah Rapha is a healer. They saw the deliverer. They saw the provider. They saw their father. They saw Jehovah Rapha. Whenever they were at the Red Sea, think about it. They just got away. They're at the Red Sea. They can't get forward. They're having people come in against them, the Egyptians, to kill them. Could you imagine? You're like, well, why did we come here? Well, all of a sudden, the stick goes down, the water separates, they walk through to glory. They see another miracle of God because God is their deliverer. God is Jehovah Rapha. But what happened in between all these miracles and back to Exodus chapter 15? We can put it back on the screen. Then Moses led Israel from the Red Sea and they went to the desert of Shur. For three days, say three. 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 I'll say, I'll say myself, three. <laughs> For three days, they traveled in the desert without finding water. When they came to Marah, they could not drink the water because it was bitter. So the people grumbled against Moses. Our circumstances in this world makes us bitter. You might have seen the hands of God. You might have seen the miracles. You might have had a, a sea split for you. But for three days... In the hot sun, with no sunscreen, with no AC, they don't have any water. And now they come to a water, and it's bitter. How many people know bitter people in your life? So what happened? Could you imagine if you were the first person to walk up to the water? You're like, I haven't had water for three days. You're dehydrated. You're on the point of death, and you fall face first into the water, and you start just lapping it up like a dog. Then all of a sudden, it tastes bitter. Man, you would be mad. It's like, God, you gave me bitter water. We've been praying for three days, and now we got water, and now it's bitter. And so what happened is two to three million people are grumbling against Moses. Have you ever grumbled to God? I have. The waters were bitter. But I want you to hear what uh, Moses did. He didn't grumble back. He didn't backbite. He didn't say, you're wrong, you need to, God's going to smite you. No. It says that he cried out to God. He cried out to God. And the Lord showed him a piece of wood. He threw it in the water and the water became sweet. Is it just so that the wood that was thrown into the water was a representation of Jesus Christ on the cross, a piece of wood? That he took the bitterness of our life and our sickness and our hell and our disease. And hell's not a bad word. It's the place you go. Come on. Yeah. And he's on the cross. And our bitterness turned into sweets because of what he did. Yeah. Jesus is the piece of wood. He knew that if he got on that cross... That he can heal us of everything that we were going through. Now that doesn't mean that you're going to go through hardship. That doesn't mean that you're going to have trials and tribulation. It's not all rainbows and butterflies here in America right now. As you know, we're going through some hardships. I mean, can you imagine a bakery now having to pay back a hundred thousand plus dollars because they wouldn't bake a cake? They're now trying to put a statue of the satanic uh, symbol in America. They're taking down the Ten Commandments. Can you say we're in hard times, we're in trials, and we're in circumstances? We need Jehovah Rapha to heal our land. Yeah. He is a healer today. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus. 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 What about ISIS? And they're killing Christians left and right. Murderers, religious freedom being removed. Business being shut down because of beliefs. Church being sued. Now they're trying to sue a Bible company for $70 million to take out the word homosexuality. 
We are living in rough times today. And if you don't, if, if, if you're not careful, your heart will get bitter. And the enemy wants this to happen. He wants you to hate your brother. He wants you to be against the LGBT community. He wants you to, to hate the races because there's now a race war because Confederate flag and all that stuff. You know what? What if we were people that just say, you know what? I'm going to love the hell out of them. Because Jesus is our healer. And I believe that this is where it's at. That if they see Jesus within you, they'll say, I don't know what you really have, but I want it. I am in this relationship with the same sex, but I'm not fulfilled. What do you have? Why are you so happy? Why are you in the midst of trials and tribulations standing firm and saying, God, I still trust you and believe you? Jehovah Rapha. Jehovah Rapha. Don't be surprised by what you see. God's not sitting on the throne, scratching his noggin, saying, I didn't see this coming. No, he knows what's going on. But why hasn't he stopped it? Because he's a God who gives us choices. And he's a God looking for his people to say, are you going to stand up and pray and believe? Because you know what happens whenever there is a labor pains? Why are there labor pains? Because something's about to happen. Just like a woman with childbirth. She has labor pains. It hurts so bad that she wants to stop, but she doesn't stop because she knows there's hope in the end. Yeah. There's hope for America. There's hope for you. Yeah. But you got to understand, you have to have a revelation that Jesus is a healer. That's right. America and the world needs Jesus. We need our land to be healed. And God's promise is this, 2 Chronicles 7.14. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, humble themselves, that means stop being prideful, stop being religious. That means that you just say, you know what, God, I'm just going to love, 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 love until hate is burned out of this world. Humble themselves, pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and heal their land. Jesus, Moses cried out, he threw the wood into the river, and it became sweet. Are you tired of drinking bitter water? Are you tired of drinking bitter water? Guys, I drink way too much bitter water, and when you drink bitter water, guess what? You become bitter, and then you become bitter and then your body becomes bitter. I have seen so many people with sickness and diseases because they're bitter. And I've also seen people healed because they forgave somebody because of their bitterness. It's scriptural, it's spiritual, and the word works. When you work, God's word. Jehovah Rapha is the God, our God, who heals. Point number two, our heart. If you allow bitterness of this world and your circumstances to overcome you and overpower you, your heart will turn from God. And even if it hasn't already turned from God and you have bitterness in your, in, in your heart, and I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not trying to be mean, I'm not, I'm not saying you do, I'm just saying the world in general, we are bitter. Why is there so much race war? Why is there so much uh, against homosexualities and all that stuff? And I, don't, I don't believe in all that, okay? I believe in the word and what the word says. But why is there so much bitterness? And so we have to have a healing of our hearts. But the only way to be healed of our hearts is to empty ourselves of everything that the world has put in us and allow God to put what he wants inside of us. Right. Think about this for a moment. CNN, Fox News. What do you see on the news? Another ISIS murder. Financial The financial is, is, is going down. Wall Street, all that stuff. All you see is bad, 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 bad. And what that does, it calluses your heart to actually receive God. Entertainment's done a great job. 
What about the movies that we watch? If you want to be healed of your heart, you first got to control your mind. Because if you can't control this right here, and it's only six inches away, the enemy can capture this, he'll capture this, and then this will go there. And you think it's hot here, right now? It's hotter than hell. We have to allow our heart to turn back to God, and no matter the bitterness that came through our circumstances, we have to say, God, whatever it is, I know you're going to teach me something, and you're going to make me a better person. Because really what's going on is when you go through your circumstances and your trials, you're really building a testimony. And scripture says that we defeat the enemy by, enemy by the word of our testimony and by the blood of Jesus. Anybody have any testimonies in here? I sure do. We have to be healed of our hearts. John 10.10 10 says, the thief only comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus came to give you life. And life more abundantly. Amen. Hallelujah. I want to talk quickly about the rich young ruler. And you're like, well, how does the rich young ruler have to do anything about your heart or about your soul? Well, I'm not going to go into the scripture, but I'm going to say, Jesus came to this man and he said, follow me. What happened is this man could not follow Jesus because this man didn't want to do what Jesus asked him to do. He said, I've done everything from a little boy. I haven't sinned, which I think he was lying. He needs to repent. But he's done everything from, 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 from a young age. And Jesus said, okay, well, if, if you think you're righteous, I want you to sell everything you have and give it to the Lord. Sell everything you have. And he said he turned away. Saddened. Because money had his heart. What could have our heart? Because anything that is above God is your God. Anything that is above God is an idol. Either that be in your finances, your brand new car that you wash every single day. Or a guy that we see in, in our neighborhood that's outside every single day watering his lawn even though it's going to die the next 30 minutes. Whatever is on your heart, wherever your treasures are stored, that is what you're going to receive. And I'm telling you right now, that man walked away from the greatest thing, the greatest miracle, the greatest Jehovah Rapha that he could ever receive. Because I'll tell you right now, he's not alive right now. And the money didn't go with him. But I wonder where your soul is. It just makes you think. If you read stuff in the Bible, you're like, man, I wonder what happened. I wonder what would happen if he said, you know what? I sell everything. And now he comes. I wonder what would happen. So all I'm saying is don't play this game of life to chance. Guys, have you seen the Bethlehem star lately? Did you know that God says that he will show us the seasons and the signs in the heavens? I believe that we are coming soon. And I know people say all the time, oh, Jesus is coming. He's, he's coming very soon. We are closer than we've ever been before. We are because yesterday just passed. That's true. Hallelujah. But he is coming and he's coming soon. And are you going to be ready? There was ten virgins. Five had oil. Five did it. The five that didn't have oil heard that the bridegroom was coming. They went to go buy oil. The ones that had the five oil went into the courts. The ones that didn't have the five oil came back, knocked on the door, and they didn't get to go in. I just want you to really understand that God, Jehovah Rapha, can heal your heart. He can heal your heart from the heartaches. He can heal your heart from the disease that you've been suffering. He can heal your heart from the breakup or the infidelity or whatever it is. He can heal your heart. So don't be bitter. Let him heal your heart. 
I myself have a good reason to be bitter. We go to our next point, our bodies. Guys, I'm going to talk to you about my testimony. And it's been a journey. It's been one of those roller coasters like I, like I was talking about. And bitterness tried to play a part in each and every time in my life. But I had to continue to look at the cross and say, God, that is going to make my life sweet. Because without the cross, I'm just another person walking with a body who has a spirit who's about to die and go to hell. My testimony, October 2012, I was diagnosed with stage 4 cancer. I found a lump in my neck about the size of a fist. I decided to move home to North Carolina to be with my family to go through treatments. But I had faith and believed that God could take care of me. So I decided to go through the chemo and I decided to have faith. And I said, I'll have faith. You do your thing. We'll come together and we'll see a miracle. They wanted to go through six months of chemo. After three months, they want to do testings. They said, you're going to lose your hair within the first couple of weeks. You're going to throw up every single day. And I said, no, I won't. I said, I don't believe your reports. I don't receive a report of death in Jesus' name. Not that I'm being ignorant. But whatever this word says right here trumps any word any man, any doctor could ever tell you. So after three months, they did tests and said, Jared, there's someone to find cancer all over the place. Didn't lose my hair, didn't do anything. After three months, they did testings. They couldn't find a single bit of cancer whatsoever. To God be the glory. He protected me, not only through the chemo, but it disappeared and it baffled the doctors. Now, sometimes you don't understand different things, but God starts building my faith. After faith, after faith, to say, you know what? There's more, there's more, there's more. Unfortunately, about a year later, it was February 2014, I go back to the doctor having some lower back pain. They say, Jared, I'm so sorry to tell you, but you got stage four cancer again, and it's in the bones. And I said, Doctor, I don't believe you're important. I believe they're poor with the Lord. Because I'm not going to let anybody give me a death sentence. I haven't fulfilled what I want to fulfill on this earth. Man, you only have one life to live. And so I was like, all right, you do your doctor work. I'll look for the greatest physician, Jesus Christ, Jehovah Rapha. We'll come together and we'll see a miracle. They said, Jerry, this is going to be a lot different this time. You have to go through all this chemo. You will lose your hair. We need to see your hair. Go. You're going to go through a bone marrow transplant. There's a 50-50% chance. Okay. Have faith in the Lord. Have faith in Jehovah Rapha. So I went in, chemo, all that stuff. Bone marrow transplant. Within seven days, I lost 20 pounds. It was not looking good. But every single day I had my family, had my friends, had people praying for me and believing. And very quickly, I started getting better. They thought I was going to be in the hospital for about a month or so. I got out of the hospital between 12 and 16 days, whatever it was. And it was one of the fastest times anybody ever recovered from a bone marrow transplant. To God be the glory. Yeah. I would love to say my story ended there. Six months later, cancer came back in the neck. We went through 25 rounds of radiation. My whole neck was burnt at that moment. Talk about circumstances and trials. And I'm not glorifying in what I've been through. I'm glorifying in what he's doing through it. Man, if, if you've been through heartache, if you've been through pain, if you've been through sickness or disease, I've been there with you. And maybe it just takes somebody that's gone through it to show the people that they can walk through it. And that Jehovah Rapha is your healer. Went through the radiation, went through all that. It went away, started doing holistic medicine, started eating right, 
My levels went high, they were great, everything looked perfect. Unfortunately, I came back again. Right now, I'm going through my fourth battle, stage four cancer. Stays in the sternum, stays in the hip, in the lower back, stays in the ribs. You know what I say? Jehovah Rapha, the Lord, our healer. It doesn't matter what the doctors say. It matters what God's word says. And you have to have faith. And you have to understand that no matter what you go through, that if you give up, then the devil's won. And if I do go down with this and I'm not, I will never bow down to the enemy. I'll never bow down to statistics. They say, Jared, if you don't do anything whatsoever, you got a 20% chance of living. I said, no. They said, Jared, we're going to go through more chemo. I've already been through my first cycle three weeks ago. My next cycle is this week. They're going to do another bone marrow transplant using one of my brothers. They say there's still a 50-50% uh, chance. And there's a 30% chance of dying. Guess what? Those are not the Lord's statistics. If the Lord said it in the word, it is true. And his statistics are healing. And I understand you're like, okay, well, I prayed for people before and I, I, God, God didn't heal them. Listen, I've been there. Don't let your experience, don't let your, hear me, don't let your experience outweigh God's word. Don't let it outweigh your expectancy. Because when your expectancy becomes your experience, and all you know is, well, I prayed for him and didn't get healed. Oh, I prayed for that person and he died. Oh, I prayed for a miracle. I prayed for my finances and now I'm, uh, I, I, I had to get rid of my house. Just because of your experience doesn't mean that God's a liar. It just means that he needs you to go through a little bit more detoxing of the world so that he can actually heal you of what you're going through. Good. Could you imagine... Just because you didn't, just because you prayed and didn't happen, that doesn't mean that you're not God. Because, because you now have the answers in the way that you know God and you know Jehovah Rapha, that he just only healed in the Bible. And whenever the spirit came down, it just stayed in the Bible. Whenever the Bible was done, it's like life ended. No, we are in 2015 and the spirit of God is even stronger today than he was then. It's just that we don't know how to feel him or see him or hear him because we're so focused on Facebook, on Twitter, on CNN, on the next movie coming out. I'm, I'm preaching to myself here, okay? I'm preaching to myself. You have to have three F's that will determine your healing. You gotta have faith. Say faith. faith. You gotta have facts. Say facts. facts. And feelings, say feelings. feelings. You have to have faith and you have to have facts, but do not let your feelings overcome your faith and your facts. Anybody ever think about things before like, man, this is just not going to get better? Or had those thoughts? It's okay to have the thought, but it's not your thought. It's only whenever you are having a thought and you hold on to it and you hold on to it and you hold on to it and then it becomes a heart issue. And that's whenever it's hard to get back. But it ain't over till it's over. It ain't over till it's over. I was having a hard time the other day and actually last week. Just, I'm, I'm a human. <laughs> I mean, I'm just like you guys. I, I go through my, my, my little... My little Areas of doubt at the moment, and then I got to say no. But this happened, and I'm just going to read it. The last two days, this is about, I think like Monday and Tuesday. The last two days, I have been stung by a bee on my foot and my hand. I haven't been stung in years, 
And now it's been two days in a row. Anybody ever been stung by something two days in a row? <laughs> Man, you got bad luck. <laughs> like, you need to pray harder. <laughs> when it stung me the first time, I heard a voice. I heard the Lord. I heard him say a scripture. And I was like, okay, that's just me, you know, being super spiritual and religious. <laughs> No, God got my attention the second time. <laughs> I got stung on the hand and I heard it again. And I was like, I will listen to you. <laughs> and he spoke 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 55. And it was a, something we were singing earlier. He said, O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? And this is the revelation God gave me. And I can't probably say it as good as I really am, but I'm just going to read it. God gave me a picture of how a bee stings its victim. As small as the bee is compared to a human because it believes that it would deliver a death blow. God showed me that this is a representation of the enemy. Cancer and even our circumstances. All of the, all this is compared. All of this compared to the God that is within me is small. And this bee that can only produce one sting before its own demise will only hurt for a moment. Even though this cancer hurts, it will only last for a season. Jesus defeated death, hell, and the grave so that the sting of the enemy would be its own demise for messing with God's children. Oh, death, where's your sting? Oh, grave, where's your victory? Jesus is alive. He is alive, he is alive, and he is Jehovah Rapha. Amen. And sometimes it's good to have reminders whenever you're going through a hard time. I'm going to build a little bit of faith. Everybody good with me? You good on time? I promise the restaurants will still be open whenever we leave here. Faith. I'm really going to give you some scriptures of faith. Because I'm believing that there are people here today that need a miracle. It doesn't matter if it's financial, spiritually, heartache, an eye. It doesn't matter if it's cancer. There are people here that need a touch from God. Amen. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. If you're with me, say amen. amen. And these are the scriptures that I'm holding on to every single time, through every single battle. And you know what? It doesn't matter. Faith is a substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things unseen. Your faith, even though you might not see the hope at the end, if you continue to believe and believe and believe and believe and believe and believe and you believe and you be stubborn. Anybody know any stubborn people? If you don't know anybody, just look up here. Stop pointing. You've got to be stubborn with the enemy. If you're going through a trial, especially if you're going through a death sentence in the world's eyes, be stubborn. Faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things unseen. But a little bit later, four verses later, it says that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. And my reward is going to be that I'm healed of stage four cancer again. Yeah. you got to have faith and you got to have the facts. Faith is your part. Facts is God's part. Without you doing your part, it's hard to get to God's part. I'm a little passionate about this. <laughs> Romans chapter 10. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You're know, like, well, why are we talking about faith? And we're talking about God, our healer. Well, to understand God, your healer, you got to understand God's word. And faith is the only way. And I think I have enough faith for you to be healed. But sometimes it takes your part. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. When you start to hear the word of God. You start to build faith. If you don't know the word of God, how are you going to have faith unless you're, you're living on somebody else's faith? Like a pastor or somebody that knows the word. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Mark 11, 22 through 26. This is my favorite faith to move mountains scripture. Therefore, I tell you, let's back up a little bit. And Jesus answered them, saying, Have faith in God. Have faith in Jehovah Rapha. Truly I say to you, whatever you say to this mountain, 
Whenever you say this mountain, be taken up and thrown into the sea. And it does not doubt in your heart, but believes that whatever he says will come to pass, it will be done for him. Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask in prayer, believe that you have received and it will be yours. And whenever you stand in praying, forgive if you have anything against anyone so that your Father, who is also in heaven, may forgive you of your trespasses. Break this down real quick for you. First, you have to recognize your mountain. What is your mountain today? Can you imagine your mountain? Everybody knows yourself, right? You know your mountain. You got to know what your mountain is. And then you got to speak to it. Cancer, you have to die in Jesus' name. After that, it says, don't want doubt in your heart. There's a difference between doubting in your mind and doubting your heart. I established that earlier. Don't doubt in your heart because when the enemy can capture doubt in your heart, you'll doubt in God and then you will no longer be with God. So don't doubt in your heart. Then it says that whatever you ask in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. Now, Jesus said this twice. If he ever says something once, listen, if he says it twice, you better pay attention. Whatever you ask in prayer, believe, believe, have faith, and it will be yours. And the very last thing, forgive. I mentioned the bitterness earlier. I've seen so many people, and I'm not just saying this. I pray for so many people because I'm with the ministry on Friday night. And I see so many people that have unforgiveness, and I see them healed. Not every time, but I see people healed because of unforgiveness. If Jesus himself, who died on the cross, who had no sin whatsoever, died for the forgiveness of sin to forgive us, to heal us, what would happen if we had forgiveness for other people and then we received our miracle? It doesn't matter if it's a physical it could be spiritually. It could be that you need to forgive that person and go to the next level in God. Or break a financial curse that's over your life. Mark 5.25. Anybody ever heard of the story of uh, the woman with the issue of blood? And I love this. It says... And there was a woman who had a discharge of blood for 12 years and who had suffered much under middle, uh, many physicians and had spent all that she had and was no better, but rather grew worse. Man, you go to all the doctors, you spend all of your life savings and you only get worse. It's time to find the greatest physician in the world, Jesus Christ, on that one. She heard the reports about Jesus, came up behind him in the crowd, and touched his garments. For she said, if I touch even his garments, I will be made well. Faith comes by hearing. What did she hear? She heard that Jesus was coming. What did she hear about Jesus? Jesus was a healer. Jesus healed leprosy. Jesus raised the dead. Jesus, everywhere he went, touched people, and people were made well. She was desperate. Are you desperate today? I'm desperate today. I need a touch from God. And immediately the flow of blood dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed and all of her diseases. And Jesus perceiving that himself, that power had gone out from him, immediately turned about in the crowd and said, who touched my garments? And his disciples said to him, see the crowd pressing around you and yet you say, who touched me? Listen, come into church. It's awesome. Be in church. But don't come to church just to be a, a bypasser who's just going to walk past Jesus and, and just touch him when you feel like you're supposed to or just worship when you feel like you're supposed to. There were many people touching Jesus in this very moment. But the, the power of Jesus never left his body until somebody with a purpose, somebody with a desire touched Jesus. And immediately, she felt within inside of her body that she was whole. Good. If you touch Jesus with a purpose, immediately, you can be healed by faith. And this is what Jesus says at the end. Who touched me? And he looked around to see who had done it. But the woman, knowing that he had, knowing what had happened to her, 
came in fear and trembling and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. And he said to her, daughter, your faith, hear me, daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. At the beginning of the story, she started out as a woman. Hmm, I love this. At the beginning of the story, she started as a woman. But she was a woman with a purpose. The woman with a purpose, and I know there's a lot of women that have a lot of purpose, and when they have, I'm not going to start, but when they think about something, they're going to do it. They're determined. She had a purpose, and she was a woman, and she touched Jesus. And at the end, she was no longer a woman. What does it say? It says, daughter, your faith. Daughter. She became adopted because of her faith. Because she believed that Jehovah Rapha was the healer of her body of 12 years of discharge of blood, which I'm sure was very uncomfortable. Man, that gets me. She became a daughter. She became an unknown person to a daughter of the Most High God because of her faith. Mark 16, 17 through 18. I don't think you have it on the screen. You can go ahead and go to that slide for me. The picture for me? Thanks. No, not that one. Not that one. My bad. Mark 16, 17 through 18. It says, These signs will follow those who believe. And this is word. In my name they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents. And if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Has anybody ever seen anybody healed? Awesome. Awesome. Yes. Yes. And this is no emotional thing. God's mandate in the scripture says, and he's talking to his disciples, we are his disciples, it says, lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. You know why people aren't recovering nowadays? Because we're not laying hands. And it's not have to be something weird because, listen, there have been a lot of people that have perverted this. There's a lot of people that have prayed for people and done different things or spoken tongues that wasn't really tongues that really made you bitter towards everything of the God. But if it's in the Bible, it's the Bible and it works. Amen. Brad, if I can go ahead and get you to come up here, please. And we're about to close with this. But you can go ahead and throw that, uh, that picture of Jesus back on the screen. And I want you... I, Listen, I know this isn't something that everybody loves to look at. I do. It's beautiful. Because with every strike, with every blow, he did it for me. And there was a time when he was in the Garden of Gethsemane, and he asked his father. He said, Daddy, if you are willing, please take this cup away from me. He asked him again, Daddy, if you are willing, please take this cup away from me. Jesus asked him a third time, Daddy, if you are willing, take this cup away from me. And then he said, okay, I'll do it. What was so important about this cup? Well, Jesus knew what was going on. He knew that he was about to go to his demise, which actually would be his victory and our victory. But he knew that it was going to be scourging. He knew that he was going to be beaten. He was going to be persecuted. He was going to be spit upon. He knew he was going to be hated. He knew that his father would have to turn his back on him. But you know what the greatest thing was? Inside that cup, he saw all that. He saw wrath. He saw fury. He saw hell. He saw everything. The number one thing he saw was he saw was your face. He saw your face because he knew if he did not go and do it that you had no hope. And now we have this. Jehovah Rapha. Listen, just let it sink in. We don't play church here. I don't play church in my life. I don't have time. 
We don't have time. God's coming back and he's looking for a spotless bride. And he needs an army of God to rise up and to say, God, I'm tired of, of being a Christian on Sunday but looking at pornography on Monday through Saturday. Or being a Christian or going out and getting drunk and just being like the world. Or being a Christian or not even being uh, very uh, mindful of your money when you can go somewhere else to benefit the kingdom of God. He's looking for people. Did you know that there's considerably 39 disease categories in the doctor world? 39 categories of diseases in a doctor world. It can be broken down 39 degrees. There was 39 stripes on the back of Jesus. He had every stripe for every category of disease. There is nothing that God can't heal and won't heal. <laughs> Isaiah 53, 5. You don't have to put it up. Yeah, you can. <laughs> Why not? Not for me, not for anybody around you, for your life. He wants to take you deeper. He wants to heal your body. He wants your heart. He wants you. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed in Jesus' name. Everybody close your eyes for me. Just close your eyes. Close your eyes in Jesus' name. I want you to imagine Jesus on the cross. Imagine him at the whipping post. Seriously, guys, seriously, in your mind's eye, you are imaginative. God made us to imagine things. Instead of imagining the bad, I want you to imagine Jesus. Just for a moment, bear with me. With every strike, with every blow, deafness was healed. With every strike, with every blow, blindness was healed. With every strike, with every blow, skin disease was healed. With every stripe, with every blow, arthritis was healed. God, my healer. With every blow, with every stripe, STDs, HIVs, ADHD, back pain, slit disc, hernia, God, my healer. Anxiety, depression, suicidal thoughts, mental illness. God, my healer. Diabetes, thyroid disease, MS, paralyzed symptoms, nervous system failures. God, my healer, Jehovah Rapha. Heart disease. Heart disease. God, my healer. Cancer. God, my healer. There is nothing that Jesus didn't heal. There's nothing that Jesus can't heal. And there's nothing that he won't heal. 